Egypt is still reeling from the deadliest terror attack to hit the country in recent history. It happened Friday in the northern Sinai region. Militants bombed a crowded mosque during Friday prayers, then went on a shooting spree inside, killing more than 300 people. No terror group has claimed responsibility, but authorities say the attackers are likely linked to ISIS. And now there are growing concerns over the Islamic State's recruiting efforts in the country. Joining me now from Geneva is Mohammed Sultan. He spent nearly two years in an Egyptian prison and is now a human rights advocate. Welcome, Mohammed. Thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, judging by the scale of this particular attack, do you think that Egypt is ISIS's next big target? Well, I'm, I'm a human rights advocate, not a, a political analyst, but I mean, we are seeing uh, it, it's such a devastating act of terror and the pictures and the numbers we're seeing 27 children, uh, 305 killed, 120 injured. You know, I think a 2006 consensus has, a, uh, uh, has that a fifth um, with the numbers that a fifth of that entire village's male population was basically killed uh, mm -hmm. uh, in one day. That's, uh, it's, it's absolutely devastating. Um, and in, in Egypt, these are definitely uh, days of mourning. Um, it, it's very clear that Egypt has a huge terrorism problem. Just looking at the sheer numbers in the last, since 2013, you have about eight attacks with 700 uh, plus victims um, that were killed. Uh, uh, you know, and, and seeing that, seeing the escalation, having four in the last uh, uh, year in 2017, and seeing, you know, against mosques, churches, against just uh, public spaces, it's, it's a, this escalation is, is, uh, is noticeable uh, in these terror attacks that are targeting civilians uh, from all across Egyptian, uh, um, you know, whether they're cops, whether they're Sunni Muslims uh, or, or, or military and, and security forces. So, Mohammed, tell us about your own experience under President LCC. How is it that you came to be imprisoned and what is it that you saw and you witnessed uh, when you were in prison regarding uh, ISIS and its recruiting efforts? So to understand the rise of terror attacks that has happened in Egypt, it's important not to separate it from the unprecedented wave of repression that an, an, an escalating one um, that has been going on in Egypt since 2013. Egypt under Sisi has literally become quite the black hole for, for human rights, democratic governance and rule of law. Um, I mean, Sinai alone has been a, a, a kind of in the dark since 2014 under emergency state, which is the equivalent of martial law, where no independent human rights organizations, NGOs, or uh, media outlets are allowed in Sinai. Um, that's Sinai alone. Um, and, and that wave of repression, that's the one I got caught up in. I got shot in the arm for simply tweeting the violent dispersal of peaceful protests in 2013. I subsequently was um, arrested and uh, tortured both physically and psychologically uh, throughout my 22 months uh, in detention. And throughout that period, those same prisons house 60,000 political prisoners and dissidents now, uh, 19 of which are Americans who have been languishing in the most inhumane conditions for uh, uh, four years now. And I got to interact with people from the entire uh, uh, political spectrum in Egypt and people that were in there for criminal acts, some of which were ISIS members. So before getting to the recruitment efforts inside of prison, you're talking about an already um, a fertile ground and an environment that is conducive to uh, uh, radicalization, that um, it's already ready. There's already many susceptible, young, disenfranchised um, Arab uh, uh, spring dissidents that are in these prisons. Uh, and then you have, so on top of that, you have these active, proactive recruitment efforts inside a prison where actually some Sinai recruiters, top recruiters, uh, when I was on hunger strike, they would be, you know, allowed in my room to talk to me about how this nonviolent resistance doesn't work, how the U.S. government has basically uh, sold me out and has continued to embrace this, embrace this dictator who is imprisoning, you know, uh, uh, me and my father, my, you know, journalist friends and all of this, trying to convince me to go, you know, uh, 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 
radical. And it, it's interesting to see that. All right, Mohammed Sultan, thank you so much for your time, Mohammed. Thank you.